Hi, I'm Slack, this is Tony, and this is Snow Wolf? No, this is Snow Wolf 200 Watt version 1.5. Alright. Yeah, so you may be wondering why we're bothering to review such an old device. I mean, version 1.5 has been out a couple of months, and obviously the predecessor have been out for ages before that. But, you know, it's a 200 watt device. It's pretty versatile. You've got some good TC on there. There's a lot of other 200 watt devices coming out, so it might be handy for you to compare it to. Also, in the not too distant future, Snowwolf 75 watt and the Snowwolf version 2. Right, without fucking about anymore, let's get down and unbox this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we start, there's a couple of things you should know. Firstly, I have just gone through this whole unboxing. Uh, however, the recording didn't work, so this is take two. Next up is the random banging and squeaking you can hear are the guinea pigs. And uh, I can't be asked to get rid of them because I'm freaking ill, which is part three of things you should probably know. Anyway, without further ado, let's unbox the Snow Wolf. So, I'll take this off again. And a quick tour around the outside of the box. What you can see is the lovely shiny silver Snow Wolf. Uh, what you can't see is the sort of texture of the box. It's like a rubbery, sort of smooth, very cool feeling box. We've got some tech specs which are going to run through later and some general sort of safety info and info about the device. Okay, opening her up. We have our warranty card from Asmodus Distribution. We have the uh, wordy thing, and that's quite enough of that. And we have one iPod. Oh no, wait, uh, Snow Wolf uh, losing these things. So the first thing that I, I'm very impressed with is the size of this unit. Having seen other people review it in the past, I always figured it was bigger than this. Uh, this might be just to do with the fact that I'm pretty giant and maybe the people I've watched do the review are tiny. So a quick tour around this fingerprint magnet, as you can see, I've, I've already touched it up a bit. We've got our screen up here, a nice sort of black finish, also available in white. Go button, plus minus button. One really cool 510 connector, very unusual. Uh, black panel on the back, which is your removable battery. Snow Wolf info here. And some decent battery venting on the base. Come down to the bottom, here's your battery cover, which has magnets on each corner there. Two of the corners. Okay, so I'm going to fit some batteries now. This will be the first time I've got as far as fitting batteries. Fingers crossed. Okay, so fitting the batteries, I've just bought with it a pair of uh, LG HE4s. And I'm going to whack them in now. So we see positive this way. In he goes, and then positive this way. Bump. Battery cover back on. Battery cover fits nice. It's a good weight in the hand. Doesn't feel too heavy. Doesn't feel too light. It's nice and sturdy, and the fit is pretty good in the hand. I was a bit worried from looking at it at first that with weight it was going to be an awkward sort of size to hold, but it feels pretty good initially. Okay, I'm just going to fit up an atomizer and we'll go through some of the functions. Okay, so I'm fitting up Lemo 2 just because I have it to hand, but I have some airflow just in case I get carried away with this. Okay, so to power the device on, it's the standard five clicks. On you go button there. And there we go. We're booted up. Quick tap of the uh, go button there, I don't know if you saw that. It went from zero ohms to actually take the reading, what we're getting on the device. The device had a built-in lock mode, which you access by pressing the plus button and the go button. 
simply on and off. That's really quick, that's really smooth, there's no waiting, there's no messing. Plus go, done. Simple. As the Lemo is fitted with a Canthol wire, it's automatically picked that up and chucked you into wattage mode. So you can just simply use the plus and minus buttons to adjust through your wattage. So we go from 5 watts All the way up to 200 watts. I'm not going to attempt to fire the Lemo with its 1.2 ohm coil at 200 watts. We've got some more features to run through, including temperature control, but we'll go through that all later. This is your basic operation getting it out of the box. Okay, let's take a look at the Snow Wolf and the HGAR VT200 together, uh, and not too much me. Um, the size, I, I'm really impressed with the Snow Wolf for being a dual 18650 mod. Size wise, it is not much bigger at all than the H Cigar. So, 200 watts of power each of these. Uh, the Snow Wolf is slightly bigger, it is slightly heavier, but not by much. I mean, we are talking like very little in it. Which is very impressive in my opinion. Screen wise you're actually looking at a very similar sort of size and brightness of screen. Uh, it may not look it on camera but there's very little difference in it uh, in the real world. Having just fitted tugboat on there uh, it's asked me if it's a new atomizer and it's doing the standard plus for yes down for no. Which I've just confirmed. Okay, coming up, tech specs. Pause it if you want to read it. Now, let's talk about updates to version 1.5 over the original. Okay, first one is they've changed the sleep mode, which no one liked in version 1. Uh, what happens with this one is after five seconds, your screen's going to dim, and then after another five seconds, your screen will go out. And then after 20 minutes, you go into hibernate mode. You just need to turn it back on after that, which works really well for me. I'm perfectly happy with it. How do you turn it back on again, is it? Well, it's when, when it's in sleepy mode, you just press it and it, it wakes up. Any button. But when it's in hibernate, you've got to do your five clicks on. So like turning it on brand, they, you know, brand yeah. new again. Okay, the next update in version 1.5 is the system lock. Yeah, it's awesome. We well, showed you it in button presses. Uh, two clicks and it's done. There's no waiting. There's no press and hold for two seconds. I fucking hate that. If I want to lock something, I want to lock it quickly and I want to unlock it quickly. And power is that quick. Brilliant. Love it. Okay, next up, you've got the check atomizer bit where you force it to recheck the atomizer. That's new. A lot of people ask for it. It's there. It works. It's fine. The next update in version 1.5 is uh, the consistency of the temperature measurements. Yeah, so it runs very smooth. However, um, I found it, and I've seen other reviewers have also found it, the temperature you get on here, you set 200 degrees. It's different temperature to 200 degrees on another device. So I don't think they've got their temperature that much more accurate. It's probably better than version 1, but you know the temperature itself is still out. But regardless of that, when you're getting a hit, it is consistent. It works really well. And lastly, for updates for version 1.5, are hardware. Yeah, so you've got a deeper 510 threads. Yeah. Oh! Uh, yeah, it's a nice 510 connector. Um, oh. It's good. A lot of people complained about the previous one. This one's awesome. Love it. And the last up is the screen. They've gone away from the garish blue to a whiter blue. Uh, it's basically the same screen, but the colour change is nice. It looks good. It works well. Talk about the deeper thread again. <laughs> deeper. Oh. Harder. Deeper. Okay, so it's a 200 watt device. I've just cranked it up to 200 watts, something I wouldn't usually run on. It's a bit out of focus. We'd have to have auto focus off, otherwise the smog gets the better of us. Um, it's got a low build on here, 0.18. I, I've built lower, but this is sort of good strong wire. We've got Texas Tough on the inside. We've got zero nicotine. So we're going to give it a hit on this just to show you what, how crazy it is. 
Now, once we go above 150 watts, it goes into pulse mode. Top right, you get a little P pop up to show it's in pulse mode, but it only shows it's going to do that when you're actually vaping, so you wouldn't ever really be seeing that. Vaping at 200 watts, it's kind of like you buy a car, right? It's a fast car, and it goes up to 160 miles an hour. And would you take your car out and just drive it 160 miles an hour? You might try it once if you're a twat. I mean, you know, if you're, you know, non-law abiding, you know, just a bit reckless like I was when I was younger. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you're not going to drive everywhere at 160 miles an hour, even if your car does it, because accidents are going to happen, right? But there are those race days. Yeah, there are race days, there are vape competitions, and there are times when you're going to want to push a device. For day-to-day -day usage, I mean, I never go above 100 watts on day-to-day -day usage. Occasionally, I'll get very close to it if I'm feeling a bit cheeky on a dripper, but very rare would I get up that close, let alone 200 watts. But, you know, we thought, it's a 200 watt device, let's give it a shot. So, for your viewing pleasure, and, and for science... And for science... For science, 200 watts on a nuke clone with some uh, 24 gauge, 22 gauge flat wire. Sorry. Right, let's do it. Should I stand back? The, the emergency plan is it launches out the window. Uh, okay. If it misses the window, you run. Everyone clear on that, right? Emergency plan. <laughs> that wouldn't look too bad at all. That smells delicious. Right, we've got some juice left in it. <laughs> Smooth. So much paper, it just wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't get out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, it's tasty as hell, though. I'm going to actually give that another hit. In a way, it's a shame I chose the nuke. Now, I chose the nuke for the massive airflow. For when you're chucking 200 watts. Uh, however, well you can hear it there, chugga 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 chugga. Now that's what it does. Above 150 watts, you pulse right, chugga chugga chugga. Yeah. Let's give it a hit anyway. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. <laughs> See, you laugh at me. You laugh at me. See, that's quite enough for 200 watts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is for you that we do it. This is for you. Yeah, definitely. No, that was lovely. I'm not. I'm feeling a bit ropey, so... Oh, yeah, let's clean the trip, <coughs> too. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Safety first. Safety first. <laughs> Concentrate. Ooh. Oh. Damn. So the power delivery on <clears throat> 200 watts actually is really smooth. It's really solid. You know, it's, this is like doing 160 in like a 8 series BMW. It's not like doing 160 in a Volkswagen Golf. You know, this 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 is good. It, it feels solid. Mm. Uh, and that's one thing I do like about the Snowwolf, except for the warm up hit. The power delivery seems really, really good to me. Really happy with it. Okay, that was a great example of what I mean by the warm-up with this. Well, I just put a new atomizer on it. It had been stood for a while. The first few seconds of the hit, nothing happens. And uh, afterwards, it kicks in and, and away you go. So the first hit is always a bit disappointing. After that, it's just dead on power delivery. Off. Okay, we're not going to do an upbeat closey for button pushes because, you know, everyone's seen it. So I'll just reel them off and uh, Slack will show you here and now. So how do we turn it on? Standard five clicks and uh, go through the boot cycle and there you have it. Okay, next up, how do we lock it? So plus button and up uh, and bam, straight away locked. There's now this three click, press and hold it for two seconds, power locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. Brilliant. Okay, so when you uh, fit a new atomizer to the mod, it will detect the resistors, but for any reason you need to check the resistance manually, slack. Yeah, so just quite simply press minus and go, and it asks you if you've got a, basically a cold coil in there, uh, so you can sort of 
it's a bit like resistance lock. Uh, I haven't, so I'm going to say no and just reverts to where it was. Adjusting temperature and wattage. So if you've got a TC unit in, you can, uh, whichever mode you're in with the plus and minus buttons up and down, then press both plus and minus together and it will switch between wattage and power mode and you just cycle them through. Now, power mode, it only goes up to 75 watts. Uh, what I've been finding though, is that some of my temperature control units don't like to believe that their temperature control units on here. And it says it only works with pure nickel. I've been using pure nickel and I've had it just suddenly go into power only mode. You can tell it's power only mode because it says power there rather than displaying a temperature. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's a dodgy coil. So, but that's good. That's temperature control working at yeah. its finest there. I mean, that was a good example. So I've got a dodgy TC coil in here. It's on low temp mode, and I'm not getting any real vapor out, but I'm not getting a dry hit. Mm. It's working as expected. Okay, so now comes the time where we usually do pros and cons. It's, it's such a blur between pros and cons and our usage and findings, so it may come out all in a bit of a smush. But let's just run through some things that we found when using it. Okay, so first up on the cons, for me, a pet hate of mine. I know a lot of people go on about battery safety and all that shit, but there's no USB charging on it, and what with there being no USB charging means there's no firmware updates. So just another typical example of a company not willing to invest in the future of their devices and just pump out another device to the masses. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with that. That is a downside that there's no firmware update. I fully get why there isn't USB charging. You know, big devices don't have USB charging unless you're on your LiPos with your really intelligent charger. So, I mean, yeah, USB charging would be great, but I get that it's not there. I get why it's not there. To have something that would deal with the charging's load of extra space and electrics and hassle, and it's just not done. But it is a pain. And you need to remember that if you're stepping up from a nice thick 100 watt, mm. something like that, you know, there is no USB charging. You're going to need to factor in yanking your batteries out and, and sticking them in a charger. No problem for me. That's how I do it anyway. Tony hates it. Ah. But yeah, no firmware updates. So if you want an update, you know, you can't. If you want to get a new temp control profile for titanium, you can't. If you, That's it. You know, what you buy is what you get. And... and that's kind of a con, but at the same time, there's also a pro to that. It makes the device a lot less simple. There's a lot less fucking about. You turn it on, you use it. When you finish with it, you turn it off. End of story. It makes it simple. It makes it easy. Just like me. Simple and easy. <laughs> Okay, next up, which is firmly a con, I have had some real problems getting it to notice that I'm using a temp control device. You know, I'll, I'll stick a dripper on there that I built with pure nickel and it doesn't freaking pick it up. Or sometimes it picks it up and changes its mind. It, you start off and you vaping around and you just, why is this so harsh? Oh, because we've gone into power mode and I'm just chucking 75 watts through the fucker. <laughs> so, you know, that isn't perfect. But when it does work, temp control is really good on here. I really like it. Next up is that it doesn't support titanium coils. Yeah, where it's a bit old and titanium sort of new, you know, uh, yeah, just doesn't support it. You need nickel if you want to do TC. So there you go. Is it that old though? I mean, I thought titanium was out at the time that this was out. Yeah, I mean, it's 1.5 k came out a few months back, and titanium's only just at that point starting to get popular it was out people were using it don't yeah. get me wrong but you know it was obviously yeah. too new for the time when yeah, they were when manufacturing it developing it also because this is an update from version one it's probably just coming across with that so it's a shame but yeah. you know it's not there next up on the cons is uh, like saw earlier in the review the first hit is a slow hit yeah well, Okay, I'd use it recently. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, sometimes there's a couple of seconds build up where yeah. you think, fuck, have I got this unlocked? Yeah. What's going on? Um, it's a bit of a pain, but once you're used to it, you get over it and you, you know what you're dealing with, so it's fine. Okay, also, next up, like we said earlier in the review, the 150 watt sort of, you know, cut off as it were, once it goes over 150 it then starts to pulse. Yeah, so a lot of people are saying this isn't a true 200 watt device because after 150 watts you're pulsing, it's it's not delivering the power the same way it does below 150 watts. Now, it is a con, 
because you know this is not a true 200 watt device where you can get your continuous 200 watts but at the same time I'm not going to be vaping that high and when I do it adds that bit of safety you know pulse on your batteries so it's all right it is a con but it's not a bad one in my opinion you're not going to be vaping there that often mm. next up on the cons or lastly maybe for the cons I don't know where I'm editing this the buttons are clicky they're but rattly. I hate that. Well, hardly not, rattly. Not terrible, but yeah. they are reminiscent of the iStick 100 watt, which yeah, I, think, I fucking hated. Yeah, I think you've just got bad vibes about this. They're barely rattly. No, they're not, they, they they're not as rattly as the iStick 100 watt, but to me, I don't find that annoying. The iStick 100 watt, I agree, but you know. The, the buttons could be better. The click could be better. I like the button presses. No, I no, like no. the buttons. I like the click. But they are clicky. But the, but the rattle. It, it's, it's not, not bad. as bad. It's yeah. not as bad as the i six hundred watt. I'm 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 owning up to it. I'm saying it's not as bad. But if it's a it's a con in my mind because when I'm using it, I, I can feel feel the button moving under my finger, and I don't like that. If I'm going to go for a button push, I want it to be solid. I want it to be there. Okay, one thing that may or may not be seen as a con is the size of it now I, when I first got this I thought it was a pretty good size you know it's a dual 18 650 and, and they sit in there nicely and it's pretty slug and you think yeah 200 watt unit dual 18 650 that's a good size then you have the iJoy A Solo 200 watt which is smaller by maybe 10% all the way around 8% you know but it's much smaller it's much lighter the size difference is noticeable also 200 watt so I'm going to say about styling. Uh, a lot, while I like the metal around the outside, the 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 face of it, fingerprint magnet. Oh, it's a massive fingerprint magnet. But while we're talking about styling, I would have that as a pro. I freaking love how this thing looks. It is an absolute beast. Oh, it is a sexy, sexy mod. Uh, since the first snow, I saw the first Snowwolf. I was just, I loved it. It looks awesome. Uh, when you open it up out of the packet, it just looks like an iPod. You know, it is so cool. Uh, I think I'd prefer it if this this metal finishing was actually on the face of it as well and yeah. just had the screen showing. I think that would have been... See, whereas I think that would look a bit naff. But it's horses for courses. Just look at it. You'll either like it or not, you know. And lastly, for the cons, it's like me. It's a bit thick set. Yeah, it's quite heavy. I mean, it fits pretty good in your hand, apart from the little finger underneath. It, again, you know, it might rub on your knuckles, Matt. Um, but... Yeah, the weight of it, I if you like a weighty device, then this is a pro. But, you know, it's a little bit on the heavy side for me. Flip side to that is it's really well built. I love the manufacturing on this. It, it's brilliant. It does feel really good and solid. It's not just heavy like it's got some bricks in the bottom like a tumble dryer, you know. It, it's, it's heavy for a good reason. So, okay, we'll run through some of the pros. I mean, some of them we've already sort of mentioned as part of the cons, you know, because it's one of those things there is no good and evil only a matter of perception and it's the same with that but like the styling uh, and the manufacturing on this i think are brilliant it's a really really well made unit it's got a magnetic battery door and it fits really well you know it does move if you wobble it but when you're using it you don't notice that you compare that to the x cube 2 man and it's a world apart mm. the way they've done it, it is just brilliant the other thing with the battery door is that there's two two sort of like nodules uh, either either side of it, and those nodules are actually different sizes, so you're never actually going to get it around the wrong way. Yeah, it only fits one way. You've got a double magnet at the top and a bigger magnet at the bottom, and it just whacks in nice and easy. Works really well. It's got a good battery pull in there. The batteries fit really well. There's a nice tight connection. Put them in positive side first, or the springs don't seem to work, which is a bit weird, but, you know... Once they're in, stable, solid, brilliant. One thing that's really awesome about this is the adjusting of temperature, right? Uh, when you go down, right, so you're in Fahrenheit, and you go all the way down to Fahrenheit, what it will do is flip over into centigrade at the lowest thing. So once you get to the bottom, so it goes to your lowest Fahrenheit, and then it will flip over into your 100 degrees C, which is the lowest it goes. And then if you start going up, you go up the centigrade, and when it gets to the top, it will then flip over into Fahrenheit. But if you... Oh shit, I didn't want to go into Fahrenheit. You just flip it back down one from the top and it'll go back into centigrade. I really like the implementation of that. It's so easy to use. Brilliant. So what, it's like a fucked up round robin? 
yeah, it's not round robin. Like that's what I hate. What I hate is like when you're on round robin. If you get up to the top temperature, say you're going crazy and you want to vape at you. Say you've got up to the top temperature and you want to vape at 350 degrees C. Right, and then you accidentally click it one notch, right? And then you're vaping at the minimum Fahrenheit. That sort of round robin where yeah, it goes, yeah. it's crap. They've sorted that in this. The way it's implemented is brilliant. All the way at the top, it stays at the top, and it goes all the way down in a different measurement. That's brilliant. And so I suppose the biggest pro I think about this device is just how simple it is to use. When you compare it to something like the DNA 200 devices, which is one of its main competitors, they're at a similar price point and they've got the similar power. You can do a hell of a lot more with the DNA 200, but you will be fucking about with it a hell of a lot more. I spend as much time fucking about with the software and the settings than I do just using it. This doesn't let you do that. Now, that's a curse and a blessing. So, for me... I just love the simplicity of it. Pick it up, go, adjust the voltage, adjust the temperature, it's done. All in the button clicks, no connection for USB, no wondering whether you need to check for a firmware update. It makes it simple and it's good. I like the simplicity of it. Okay, and now it's that time of the show where we are Slack. Where did you get it from and how much did it cost? So I got it from noblevaping.co.uk and it cost 77 quid and yeah, uh, the price is falling. These were over 100 quid in the UK when they first came out. Yeah, 140 $150, 60 uh, in the US. Uh, and the price is currently falling. Now, uh, there was originally talk of V2 being out in November this year. That's been pushed back to February next year at the moment. Obviously, things could change. But, you know, we're waiting for February. Uh, the Snowball 75 watt lands any minute. And so prices on this are going to start falling. So when you compare that to pick out the H cigar for 120 quid we paid for it, yep. you know, the DNA 200 devices, and that's a fairly cheap DNA 200 device. Vapor shot, 170 quid in the mm. UK. This is 100 quid cheaper than that. Now, okay, you don't get as much functionality, but as the price is falling on this, it makes it a more and more, you know, appealing. Attractive. Yeah, it yeah. really is. The build quality on it is awesome. It feels like a really expensive device. It performs like a really expensive device. It's not without flaws, but I love it. Hmm. It does feel like it will take a knock or two. That's what she said. It sounded dirty, but yeah. I didn't intend that to be. I'm sorry. Okay, guys, so that's it for our review of the Snow Wolf version 1.5. Thank you for watching. If you like what we're doing, please drop us a like and give us comments down below because we like that sort of stuff. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that sort of thing. Yeah, we're quite mm -hmm. chatty. If you've got any questions about this or anything else that we've done or you want to see, just hit us up, you know. So, thanks for watching Smog Blog. Hi, I'm Slack, this is Tony, and this is Snow Wolf? No Snow way. Wolf. <sighs> Fuck, wrong mod. Whoops. <laughs> 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 this okay. is a solo. I'm still down a tank. <laughs> but anyway, it's not about that. Yeah. It's about this. Ding dong. Yo. No. We don't say yeah. It's not the fucking eighties anymore. Jesus Christ. Ready? <laughs> what up? <laughs> what up? There you go. Only one fuck up. Not yeah. too bad. Mail that. What the fuck are all my outtakes? Yeah. For Bitch. A... We need bleepers. It's Bleep early days. Bleepers. Yeah. Bloopers. <laughs> bleepers. There's <laughs> <laughs> one, Tony. For the real. At the end. As the lemo is currently built with Cantho, it's automatically picked that up. As the lemo is fitted with Canthal, it's. As the lemo is this English, and with some really fucking ominous looking. Wow, that looks really ominous, right? Um, red. Wow. Why is it red? Why is it red? Why is it red? <laughs> Answers on a postcard. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck is it red? What have I been vaping that's red? Blood? Blood of my enemies. It smells nice. <laughs> You'd say that.
smells like grape, but grape isn't red, so why is this red? You don't have to why is it? No. That's what I did. True! <coughs> what do you think, gerbils? Guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm jealous. You you're always touching it in the videos. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't help it. I've got like itchy skin syndrome. I'm just like. Nyeh. Okay, the next important update in version one point itchy fucking nose. You can't. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm just gonna ride it out. I was going to, but then it started really itching when I started looking. Yeah, I'm not gonna show it to them. Oh so, god. No, I'm gonna... Oh, they're fucking. Like... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them hanging. <laughs> right. I pros and cons are gonna kind of blend in with our usage from it. Don't you think? <laughs> You're gonna weigh everywhere. Oh, right. man, One thing I really like about the Another thing I love. Another thing he's loving about yeah. this device. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. No. <laughs> Can I wee myself? <laughs> Do you want me to get a blanket? I'll put it under you. Neffy. Yeah. How about me for a way? I feel the need. The need for wee. It's uh, subside. Did. Uh, how's, how's the sofa? Soaking I'm, it all I'm up. I'm wondering nice, whether I've pissed myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting that. Warm, damp, shameful feeling. <laughs> no. I'd say it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Yeah, there we go. But we're not them. <laughs>